Hello there and welcome to episode 2 of Colonization Project. Right now what we are doing is un unlocking level 2 of the tracking station before launching the first rocket of this episode. This rocket is th this rocket is going to the moon. It's not going to orbit the moon, it's going to fly past the moon because um, our Delta V budgets for this mission are quite tight. As you will see later in the uh, episode, but we are launching this on a Pallades launch vehicle. Um, I decided to name it that because it's um, the Pallades Nebula is sort of a small nebula when it's compared to uh, other nebula, <laughs> and and it's also I I mean I decided to give it a name because it's sort of the workhorse rocket right now. Um, because we really don't have any other options for getting uh, these small probes out to um, the moons of carbon. But we also didn't have enough fuel to get to the moon. We almost had enough, but we didn't quite make, make it. But we did make it to the um, high altitude high above carbon, so we got some science from that. But not it, it didn't complete our main goal which was going to the moon but we but that launch was quite efficient and inefficient because um it had the elliptical orbit at the beginning so i tried to do things a bit more efficiently this time and it it spoiler spoiler it worked um but we can launch effectively the same mission because I knew it could get to the moon. I tested it in one of the simulations, but um, the first launch just didn't make it, which wasn't too big of a deal. We do have quite a large amount of funding behind the space program, so it's not too big of a deal that that failed, and, it, and we still got a bit of science from it. Well, but we can now burn prograde once the moon comes over the horizon, which is a good way to get to the moon without um, needing maneuver nodes. Because the moon is in a, it's in a, it, it doesn't have any eccentric, it, 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 it's not in a, um, it, can, it is not in an eccentric orbit is what I'm trying to say, and it's not inclined. So it's rather easy to get to without maneuver nodes. But with that science, we can unlock stability general and general general rocketry, um, which completes the third tier of the tech tree. Now what we're doing is launching um, a, another one. This is a Pallades Block 2 because it has an upgraded uh, second stage. It uses two new high efficiency um, methane vacuum engines, which it's a high efficiency va vacuum engine, essentially, which gives us loads of delta V, it, um, which is definitely enough to orbit the moon. I actually had two transfer windows um, to Duna and Eve in this episode, but we have more than enough this rocket has more than enough Delta V to take a small payload on a flyby mission out to Duna or Eve, but our antennas aren't strong enough to reach out that far, so we couldn't send a mission to there in this episode, so we're going to have to wait for the next transfer window. But anyways, we have gotten into orbit with uh, 2,000 meters per second to spare, which is a lot of fuel. It's... You really don't need that much for a moon mission, but, you know, I wanted to test out the new engines that we just unlocked. But now well, we can uh, head to the moon, I guess. Now, we don't want to leave any space junk in orbit, so we are just having the second stage crush right into the moon. But we don't want the probe to suffer that same fate, so we can just use its propulsion system to 
uh, get it out of so it doesn't crash into the surface because if it did that 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 wouldn't be too good um, now what we're doing is unlocking advanced rocketry which gives us more high efficiency propulsion and upgrading the VAB and uh, launch pad which um, oh and, and wait, wait a minute we're not unlocking the mission control yet um, what are we doing here? We are launching the MUN mission. Actually, wait, no, this is the third MUN mission. This is the MUN mission that is going to land on the surface because, you know, that's, that's our goal. We fly by, we orbit, we land. Except for Minimus, though. We didn't fly by Minimus. We just immediately went to orbiting it. But... Yeah, it's not very stable when the stages separate because it was stable before because um, I might have taken a more uh, the ascent profile might have been more steep, but I guess that one wasn't. So the rocket uh, decided to flip around because it was aerodynamically unstable. But thankfully, we managed to reach orbit. And we have we still have more than enough fuel to get to and land on the moon. Not come back because we don't want to come back. This is a probe. It doesn't have a heat shield. It it, it would most certainly die if um it returned from the moon um with the atmospheric entry. But once again, just. Heading out to the moon. Yeah, this is really all this episode is going to be. We're literally just sending um, these unmanned probes out to the moon and Minimus, which is not the most exciting thing. It's not like crude space flight where, um, you know, it's crude. But it is, is these are still great milestones for the space program because you know we're landing on the moon. <laughs> um, you may notice that the rocks are floating in the air. This is a bug with Copernicus, and I fix this by turning off the terrain scatters because I mean I I, I don't want floating rocks they look a bit weird um the twr on this engine is actually quite high as you can see it has a twr of like 20 23 which is really high um which causes us to do that a couple times but we eventually do land and can transmit back all of the valuable science because you know that's what we need if we want to go interstellar we need science to unlock interstellar tech i don't think we can go interstellar with chemi traditional chemical rockets es especially small ones like this i mean we don't even have crew capsules yet um but we eventually will be getting to the point where we do have crew capsules and can get to manned space flight. But that will be in the next episode. What you just saw there was unlocking new science and um, upgrading the mission control. And you can also see that this rocket is tilted um, for some reason. I'm not sure why this happened, but... Um, yeah, I'm not sure why this happened, but I decided to try and launch anyway. This is a Pleiades Block 3 with um, an upgraded first stage engine. And uh, as you can see, I'm trying really hard to keep it going up because we want the um, we want the rocket to be facing the right way. We don't want it to be facing the wrong way but we don't actually have enough control authority to 
get it stable. So the rocket keeps pitching over and over and over. And the fins can't keep it stable. I mean, they are keeping it stable. They're just keeping it stable a bit too well. Um, I actually had a very similar thing. Actually, in a, a very, the exact same thing happened in episode two of the last series, the one that I decided to that I decided to reboot, which is this series, where we don't have enough control authority and end up going like Mach twelve at a very low altitude, not like not the altitude that we want to go at. Actually, wait, no. We are not traveling at Mach 12. We're traveling at, like, Mach 3. There's a pretty big difference right there. But much like the mission in the last series, this one suffers the same fate, and it ends up uh, crashing into the ocean at twice the speed of sound. But we fix the issues with that mission and can launch a replacement mission with... Out the crooked launch pad and um, upgraded uh, fins which have more control authority than the last and it actually manages to work this time um, something that I didn't talk about in the last episode was short-term goals of this series I want to do manned space flight. Is it manned or kerbaled? I want to do crewed space flight in the next episode. I actually, I actually have it all recorded, so I know we're going to do cur ma crewed space flight in the next episode. Um, and in the next five episodes or so, we might be going interplanetary. Now with Kerbals, we're going to be sending um, probes interplanetary because we don't have that, that kind of technology yet. Oh, another thing that's neat about the Pleiades Block 3 is that it can actually be recovered because, you know, that engine right there is quite expensive, so we want to recover it. I actually, f that at least that's what I thought when I designed this, but it's actually not that expensive, and it's not really worth it to recover these boosters. It's nice to recover the boosters because that means we don't have to produce a new one each time, but they take like four days to make, and they don't cost that much. So in the next episode, I've sort of just given up reusing, reusing that booster. Um, and we we will be continuing to reuse rockets, j maybe just not really small rockets like that one, because smaller rockets, the sort of you can make new ones easily, and the bigger rockets, like with the vector engines, those are really expensive, and you want to re uh, reuse them. So I will be continuing reusability, but I don't think we're going to be reusing the Pallades, um in fu future episodes. We will um, after episode three. We won't be re we won't be recovering them anymore. But we have arrived at Minimus. I think I talked over that entire thing, but this probe is going to Minimus and it is orbiting. As you can see, once again, we want to keep space junk to a minimum. So we uh, deorbit the second stage and then boost the uh, payload up into a stable orbit. And it can now transmit all of the science back. Um, what else is there to talk about? Uh, well, oh yeah, once again, short-term goals. Uh, I want to land Kerbals on the Mun in, within a couple episodes. And I don't know when uh, 
crewed interplanetary space flight would be. It's probably not going to be for a while because I got to episode 15 of six, actually 16 of the last series and we didn't even send Kerbals out of uh, Kerbin's sphere of influence. Um, so, so yeah, crewed interplanetary space flight won't be for a long time considering our technology right now is very limited but you know um what what is there to talk about um yeah this is a mission right here we are this is a minimus lander if the name didn't tell you enough about this mission it it is supposed to land on minimus and stay there we're not we're once again we're not no we're not taking this probe back but as you can see we are once again recovering this second this booster for the second time um yeah not much to talk about i'm not doing propulsive landings because we don't have a drone ship yet that, that's the main factor right here Definitely doesn't have enough Delta V to do a boost back burn. And Kerbal Constructs isn't working on the latest version of Kerbal Space Program, which is what I'm playing on. So I can't create launch land landing pads for the, um, uh, you know, I, 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 yeah, I can't create landing pads for the boosters to land on. So. Once we do start landing boosters uh, back at the KSC, um, I guess I'm going to have to land them on the VAB helipad, which will be interesting, considering if our booster comes crashing down a bit too fast and the VAB just explodes and we won't be able to construct a new rocket. That'll be interesting. Um, yeah, although I'm, that might actually be really, um, yeah, I think that's my, might be what I go for, it is landing, um, I might, I might land a smaller rockets on the helipad, but, um, make landing pads for the, uh, bigger rockets, because the VAB helipad is, um, I mean, I don't know. That, uh, that's a long way away. This is almost identical to the Munlander. Almost identical. Actually, wait, no, it's not identical at all. But it still does have that absolutely insane thrust to weight ratio, which is like a hundred or something. Because of Minimus's low gravity, it's really high. Um, but we have landed and we actually have a lot of Delta, Delta V left so we can actually do a couple biome hops um, across the surface so because like you paid for the whole probe so you're gonna use the whole probe um, so yeah I actually the reason why you're not seeing any exhaust from the engine is because I had to turn the thrust to weight ratio down so much that the um, that the engine doesn't actually display any effects because the TWR is so the TWR is so high. But uh, actually, that will be the end of this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next episode.